Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salar Khan here and today with some more examples. Basically today we see some examples uh, based on what the properties of the Fourier series coefficients that we have seen. So today we see some examples on them. So the first property that we saw was linearity. Now, uh, first of all, again, we would have to assume that if our signal is x of t, its Fourier coefficients are a k. So now if you have any two signals, let's say two signals, they are added together. So what would be their Fourier coefficients? The Fourier coefficients would simply be added together as well. Let's say this is a k, this is b k. So you would have an a k plus b k. A linear combination, okay, it's not necessary for addition. You have a plus, you have a minus. It could be some multiplication factor as well that we have seen already, okay. This is something, examples we, we would be dealing with simpler ones. Let's say my x of t is sine of omega naught t. My y of t is cos of omega naught t. Omega naught is the fundamental frequency. What do you have? You have x of t plus y of t, which means you have now sine omega naught t plus cos omega naught t. So you would be going through the process, you would be adding them together, you would be expanding them then, and then you would be uh, taking the common frequencies and then you would have the Fourier coefficient. The properties tell you what, you just simply add them together. You know for sine of uh, omega naught t, what do you have? We have uh, a1 is equal to 1 upon 2j and a negative 1 is 1 upon 2, negative 1 upon 2j. Isn't it like this? It is, but I have, uh, you know, yes, 1 upon 2j, negative 1 upon 2j. Similarly, for uh, for cos, we have a1 is 1 upon 2, and uh, and 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 a, so I would write over here b. b1 is 1 upon 2, and b of negative 1 is also 1 upon 2. We know that these are the only two Fourier coefficients for these functions. So what do we have? You add 1 with 1, and negative 1 with negative 1, the others would be 0. So if this was uh, ck, the Fourier coefficient, so which means that if you add the two, now the ck, the Fourier coefficient that exists are only c1, which is a1 plus b1, which is equal to 1 upon 2 plus 1 upon 2j. 1 upon 2 plus 1 upon 2j, the commons you can do yourself. You can have a c negative 1, which is a negative 1 plus beta negative 1. This is 1 upon 2, negative 1 upon 2j. This is what the property has saved us a lot of time. So this is what the first property implemented. You have to add the corresponding 1 with 1, negative 1 with negative 1. If you had multiplication over here, let's say a, x was multiplied with anything capital A, you had to multiply each and every AK by that capital A. Similarly, y of t was multiplied by any capital B, so the Fourier coefficient BK were to be multiplied with a capital B and that was the procedure. That's number one. Number two is a time shift. Number two is a time shift. So let me write over here. Now if again uh, x of t has Fourier coefficients a k, so if you're asked to find the Fourier coefficients of x1 of t, which is what? Which is x of t plus t naught, x1 of t is equal to x of t plus t naught, and then you have a plus x of t minus t naught. This is the function now, and for this you are asked to find, let's say, b k. Fine, so BK would be what? First of all, have a look for X of T plus T naught. X of T has Fourier coefficients that. So the time shift property implies what? You have to multiply it with an exponential of JK omega naught and this particular thing. So you have to multiply with an exponential of JK omega naught and this is a T naught, so you multiply it, right? And, and, and with the same function X of T, right? Similarly, then what do you have? You have this X of T minus T naught so now you have to multiply it with an exponential of j k omega naught and minus t naught multiplied with x of t and let me give it a color so that we could you know differentiate this is if t naught this one and this is minus t naught so you would have a minus t naught over here fine now the signal x of t one x one of t is the linear combination of these two signals so which means the Fourier co co coefficients would also be the linear combination so which means that that if I write it like this, x uh, 1 of t, so which is equal to x of t plus t naught plus an x of t minus t naught, so the Fourier coefficients would be what? Exponential of j k omega naught t naught into x of t, and then you have a plus exponential of negative j k omega naught t naught 
into x of t you can take x of t common i'm i'm writing this bk okay x of t is common you have an exponential of jk omega naught t naught plus exponential of negative jk omega naught t naught and what do you have if you multiply and divide it by a 2 so you would have a cosine function isn't it like that it is so if i divide it by 2 and multiply it by 2 so which means that now my bk would come out to be 2 times uh, two times what and i'm writing this ak so this is not ak okay this would be multiplied with the fourier coefficients ak i'm writing this x of t this has to be ak this has to be ak right yes so you're not telling me from before so which means that now my bk is two times ak cause of k times omega naught t so these are my new Fourier coefficients I have found them out directly using the property the third property is now what it's time reversal time reversal and you know that we have seen the proof okay so I'm going in a little speed over here now if you have time reversal so if x of t has Fourier coefficients a k now if i'm asked to find x one of t's Fourier coefficients which is equal to x of one minus t plus x of t minus one and for this i need i need to find the Fourier coefficients b k so x of t has Fourier coefficient this now x of one minus t i could write it as x of negative t plus one right so now negative t plus 1 I can write it fine so what do I do it I first I, I have two operations a time reversal and a time shift so first I shift it so which means I have an x of uh, t plus 1 first so for t plus 1 what would be the Fourier coefficients this is again plus t naught so I would have an exponential of j k omega naught and t naught is 1 t naught is 1 multiplied with the Fourier coefficient a k now I time reverse it so x of negative t plus 1 would give me what it would give me this time would be negative negative j k omega naught and then you have a of minus k fine so this is for the first one x of uh, t 1 minus t right then for x of t minus 1 so what do you have you have an x of t minus 1 what would be the come what would be the thing for x of t minus 1 i would have it as uh, exponential of negative j k omega naught and uh, it's it's a uh, minus one right so yes so this would be a negative and then i have an a k isn't it like this it should be and it is it is yes so what do i have is which which means that if this is my x1 of t so my x1 of t has got the Fourier coefficients bk this was a linear combination of these two signals so my Fourier coefficients would be the linear combination of these two Fourier coefficients these two right so I can take exponential of negative j k omega naught common and what do I have is in the brackets I have an a k plus a of minus k this is what it is this was time reversal property now again if x of t is even so uh, you could write it over here yourself if x of t is even so a of k would be equal to a of minus k if x of t was an even signal now we don't know about x of t right so which means now that x1 of t would have Fourier coefficients what a k would be equal to a minus k so this will be two times the exponential of negative j k omega naught similarly if x of t was an odd signal so a of a of k is equal to minus of minus a k so which means this would come out to be zero so my b k would be zero and this is what you have for the third property time reversal the fourth is time scaling and i write it over here the fourth the fourth is time scaling and now what do you have let me give you take an example x of t is sine of 2 omega naught t sine of 2 omega naught t x of t is sine of 2 omega naught t so now you can uh, you know do it yourself uh, through the Euler's theorem through the expansion exponential of j t minus exponential like that 
Sine of omega naught t, we have the Fourier coefficients are located at 1 and minus 1, which are 1 upon 2j, negative 1 upon 2j. For sine of 2 omega naught, now 2 omega naught is a fundamental frequency. So if this is my t, my k axis, and if this is my a k axis, now what do you have is it would be located at a plus 2, which would be 1 upon 2j. And it would be located at a minus 2, which would be a negative 1 upon 2j. So this is for sine of 2 omega naught t. Now if I time scale it, if, if, if x1 of t, now I say that if I have an x1 of t, which is x of t upon 2. So what would this be? It would be a sine of uh, 2 times omega naught t by 2. So this 2 and 2 would cancel out. This would come out to be sine of omega naught t. And sine of omega naught t means what? Now that the Fourier coefficients would be located at plus 1 and negative 1 harmonic. So I draw it with the red color. Now this is if my kx is omega naught kx is right. This is my ak. So this would be located at 1 which is 1 upon 2j at a negative 1 negative 1 upon 2j. So have a look, I told you that in time scaling the, the, the amplitude or the whatever it is, the Fourier coefficients, they will remain the same. They will not change. However, the Fourier series representation will change. That is their position of the Fourier coefficients in the spectrum will change. So previously it was located at negative 2 plus 2. Now the same Fourier coefficients are located at a negative 1 plus 1. This is what I was talking about. That is all about the fourth one. The fifth and the sixth differentiation and integration. So I have not uh, written any examples over here, right? I have not written any example for myself. So no problem that you can do it yourself, okay? The fifth is, uh, let's say, differentiation. differentiation so what do you have in differentiation if you have x of t is for coefficient a k now if you take the derivative of x of t you have to multiply this with a term exponential of j k omega naught the Fourier coefficients isn't it like this it is j k omega naught times a k and the the now let me tell you the, about the magnitude and the phase over here something so previously i believe i did not tell you so which means now the bk's magnitude would be equal to jk omega naught's multitude amplitude multiplied with ak amplitude the amplitude of let's say now bk so this would be jk omega naught's magnitude multiplied with ak so this would give you a k omega naught uh, magnitude about and ak and similarly the phase of the bk phase of the bk would be what you know how to find this right Fa phase of the bk would be the phase of jk omega naught plus the phase of ak this is a plus 90 degrees which means this would be a phase of ak plus 90 degrees so differentiator gives you a phase change of plus 90 degrees you have to remember this the the differentiator gives you a phase change of plus 90 degrees and the differentiator we would be seeing it further but for now just an introduction you know you write it down for yourself that this is a high pass filter this acts as a high pass filter and this gives you a phase shift of plus 90 degrees Fine. Similarly, now if you have, uh, if you talk about the integrator, so so I will rub a little space over here. Let's say now the sixth is the integrator. The sixth is integrator, and you know that if you have Fourier coefficients for x of t are a k. Now if you take the uh, integration x of tau uh, like this, so. So now this would have the Fourier coefficient a k would be divided by that term that is exponential of j k omega naught. So again if I write it with a b k and now let me take the green color. So this uh, the magnitude would be uh, you know divided by this term k omega naught right. Uh, the magnitude of b k would be what it would be the magnitude of a k divided by k omega naught and the phase of b k would be what it would be the phase of ak the phase of ak and this has a 90 degrees so this would be a minus 90 degrees so have a look over here the integrator you keep it in your mind the integrator provides a phase shift of a negative 90 degrees differentiator positive 90 degrees integrator negative 90 degrees and we would be again discussing this further but integrator acts as a low pass filter 
we would be discussing these points. Differentiator is a high pass filter, integrator is a low pass filter. I have not written an example for myself. You can take it your own self. You take sin omega naught t, right? Sin omega naught t has these two Fourier coefficients. You take the derivative of sin omega naught t, that would be cos omega naught t. So what would be that? These two Fourier coefficients would be multiplied by this term, jk omega naught term, right? Simple as it is. Similarly, you take the integration. You, you take the integration of sin would be negative cos. One is negative, one is positive. You know that, right? So in that case, you would divide these two Fourier coefficients by this term jk omega naught. That's it. That's it. Okay. So that's all about this property. Okay. Now uh, for the next, so let's say I remove the board. We are done with six. Okay. So I remove. <clears throat> okay. So I also remove the basic thing that is x of d has Fourier coefficients a k. Now I think I'm going in a speed, okay? So I'm sorry for that. You know these things, these are basic things and I can, can go in a speed. We done with integration. Seventh. Seventh is the frequency shifting property. The frequency shifting property. Now what do I have is if I multiply my signal with an exponential of jk mt, mt, right? J k j m omega naught t not uh, no no wait 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 j m omega naught t so this means that this word uh, no x of t is multiplied with this particular thing this would shift my signal my Fourier coefficient to position a of k minus m so have a look m is positive you have a negative m m is negative you have a positive m shifting in the in the spectrum so let's say we have an example and the example is cos of pi by 4 t cos of pi by 4 t x of t is cos of pi by 4 t so what do you have is what do you have is that my omega naught in this case is I suppose that the frequency that is given is my omega naught that is equal to pi by 4 right so if omega naught is equal to pi by 4 this means what uh, this means now that i can represent x of t as a linear combination like this x of t could be represented as uh, you know exponential of jk omega naught t so i would write a plus 1 over 2 exponential of j pi by 4 t right and then you have a plus 1 over 2 exponential of negative j pi by 4 t isn't it like this so have a look this is giving me the first harmonic and the negative one so the first harmonics basically so this gives you like this this is your k axis this is your a k axis at, at, at k equal to 1 this is a 1 over 2 at k equal to negative 1 this is 1 upon 2 this is my a k now what do i have is if x1 of t is a signal let x1 of t to be a signal that is equal to exponential of j times pi by 4 t exponential j times pi by 4 t times x of t now what would be the Fourier coefficient that are bk so have a look about this m this m would be an integer multiple of omega naught okay so have a look this is this is pi by 4 which means this is the first multiple here m is equal to 1 m is equal to 1 so this would imply what if m is equal to 1 this implies that i would now have a bk equal to a of k minus 1 and k minus 1 means what that i would have to shift it one unit toward the right and shift it toward the right means what that now uh, if these are my bk which is equal to a of k minus 1 so the first one would be located at 0 the first is located at 0 and the next is located at a positive 2 and this is what you have from the frequency shifting property now if you uh, if you don't multiply it like this if you don't have the property so what would you be doing you would be first multiplying this thing with this function which means you would multiply expression of this with this then you would have to add the powers then you would have to take the frequencies finally you would have to do it so a stepwise procedure you you, you solve that by step by stepwise procedure like this that you take this term you multiply it with the two terms and then you find the Fourier coefficient these would be the same would be located at zero and Two. the next the next is the eighth so I believe I'm missing a little eye contact so I'm sorry for that because I have 
I want to cover this over here. So I'm I'm sorry if I'm missing that eye contact and I'm not in a, keeping you in touch. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, the next the eighth is the multiplication. Okay, so let me give the heading multiplication. And in multiplication, what do you have? You have if x of t is multiplied with a signal y of t, the Fourier coefficients would be what? If it has Fourier coefficient a k, this has b k. So the Fourier coefficients would be the discrete time convolution of each other. And in this particular uh, example, I would show you another method as well of the convolution, a simpler one for a finite range of values. So multiplication let's say x of t is equal to 5 plus 2 times sine of omega naught t x of t is 5 plus 2 times sine of omega naught t isn't it like this no sine of 4 pi t sine of 4 pi t and my y of t is equal to y of t is equal to 6 cos of 6 pi t 6 cos of 6 pi t and then you have a plus 4 sine of 2 pi t plus 4 sine of 2 pi t now again x of t multiplied y of t this Fourier coefficient are unknown fine so now what do you do I told you in the previous uh, video as well maybe you're given something like this you need to calculate the the fundamental frequency omega naught first and you know how to calculate omega naught so I would give you directly this would be the HCF of what the HCF of 4 pi 6 pi 2 pi the HCF of 4 pi 6 pi and 2 pi and the HCF would be 2 pi yes yes that is 2 pi so omega naught you have got this is 2 pi directly you know how how, how you how you do it we, we know this from the previous videos so now the next step is we we would expand this we would expand this so x of t my x of uh, t weight not x of t yes yes it's x of t right so it's x of t right yes it's x of t so x of t could be written as 5 plus uh, 2 times you, you write it in terms of exponentials so 1 upon 2j right so you write directly 2 upon 2j exponential of j 4 pi t minus 2 upon 2 j exponential of negative j 4 pi t fine so from here you can see what that you have got the three harmonics right at 0 uh, omega naught was 2 pi so this is at 2 right and this is minus 2 so so what do i have a naught is equal to 5 uh, a a2 is equal to a2 is equal to 2 upon 2 j and a negative 2 is negative 2 upon 2j and isn't it like this wait why 2 upon 2 why 2 upon 2 so if i cancel them out 2 by 2 is 1 you have 1 upon j the, this i could write as a negative j this i could write as a negative j similarly 2 and 2 would cancel out and a 1 over j is a negative j so this would give me a positive j fine and i could write it in a tabular form a k I could write like this how did we represent it at 0 we have 5 at 0 we have 5 so we place an arrow over here at 1 we have 0 at 2 we have a minus j the rest are 0 similarly at negative 1 we have 0 at a, neg at a negative 2 we have plus j the rest are 0 at this side so so this is a tabular representation that we've already know similarly now for y of t for y of t what do you have you have uh, 6 times cos of 6 pi t so how do i write it 6 by 2 right 1 upon 2 and plus 1 upon 2 so 1 upon 2 means this would be uh, directly i give it inside 6 upon 2 cos of uh, no 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 wait exponential of j 6 pi t right plus a 1 upon 2 so 6 upon 2 negative j 6 pi t now this 6 upon 2 so I, I multiplied it directly then you have a 4 so I give you a plus 4 upon 2 uh, to j now exponential of j 2 pi t and then you have a minus 4 upon 2 j exponential of negative j 2 pi t and this is what you have now from here from here what do I have is that my a uh, 
this now these are I am representing by a BK so my B this is 3 so this is B3 right B3 is 3 B negative 3 is also 3 uh, this is for B2 for 1 1 this is 1 because the fundamental frequency is 2 pi so B1 is uh, 2 by J so this is a negative 2 J and B uh, negative 1 is positive 2 J and let me check let me check B3 is 3 by minus 3 B1 is negative 2 J and uh, B of negative 1 is positive 2 J yes yes so again now if I write it in a tabular form so my BK is what my BK is at 0 we don't have anything so I have a negative 3 is 3, negative 2 I don't have 0, negative 1 I don't have 0, negative 1 I have plus 2j, plus 2j. At 0 I don't have and this is my origin. Then at plus 1 I have a negative 2j, at 2 I don't have, at 3 it's 3. This is my BK. Now I need to do what I need to convolve these two together. How do I convolve them? So let me show you another method for which I remove this thing. I don't need anything now. Okay, now what do you do is you take your AK and BKs. This is how you do it in the tabular form, okay? You take this sort of a tabular form, you write your AK on one side, you write your BK on the other side. Fine. So what do you have is, it's, uh, so first let me match the origins, let me match the origins first. J0, I will write you know this 5 over here, so that I have it at my origin, that you have a 0, then you have a negative J. And similarly you have a 0 and a plus J over here, 0 and a plus J. So the longer one I write first so I write it vertically 3 0 2 j 3 0 2 j 0 this is where the origin is then you have a negative 2 j 0 and 3 fine similarly over here have a look you have 1 2 3 you have a 0 plus j and the fourth term is the origin right over here so I would over there I would also make the fourth term the origin so I have a 0 I have a plus j I have another 0 I have a 5 which is my origin now and let me draw proper arrow again not proper but and then I have a 0 negative j and 0 negative j and let me write another 0 as well so now this is how you convert them. Now what you do is you do the multiplications. You do the multiplications. So 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 like this one by one. Three zeros are zeros. You have three j. You have zero. You have fifteen zero negative three j and zero. Similarly now this the entire row would be zero. Now 2j multiply 0 is 0, then you have a negative 2, you have a 0, you have a 10j, have a 0, you have a positive 2, have a 0. Similarly, this entire row would be now 0, 7, right? Then you have a negative 2j, so negative 2j would be now a positive 2, 0, negative 10j, 0, positive 2, 0. The entire row would be 0 now and then for 3 what do you have so uh, let me give it a little space for 3 what do you have so this is how you multiply it fine now you you make a group you make what you make groups so first is of one term the second of two terms the third of three the next of 4, the next of 5, then of 6, then again of like this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, now 6 back, now 5 again, 4 again, 3 again, 2 again and 1 again. Fine. So that is it. That is it. Now how do you do it? You 
you add them all together so this gives you your your ck now this gives you your convolution this was a convolution if you are given two sets in this tabular form so my my ck which was the convolution of ak and bk so this implies my ck set is like this okay you have to add them 0 3j 0 13 0 10j negative 3j 7j 2 plus 7j 0 this one 2 uh, minus 7j 0 again 17 0 negative 3j and 0 this is how you get it now the origin the origin where do we have it so we had it on the fourth from here on the fourth from here which means one two three one two three so you add these two you have six which means the seventh term is my origin one two three four five six seven one two three four five six seven and i and that's it that's it and let me check and that is absolutely perfect so this is how you do the convolution the final let me do for Parseval's theorem as well that is the ninth property or what the tenth let me do for the Parseval's theorem as well Parseval's theorem I take a simple cosine function x of t is cos of omega naught t So you know what do we have is omega naught is the fundamental frequency the power is the amplitude squared upon 2 and the amplitude is 1 which means that the power is 1 upon 2. Now we also know that the power could be calculated using what? Where is the green color? Let it go. The power we know from the Parseval's theorem that it is equal to the summation of the Fourier coefficients and what are the Fourier coefficients in this case we know that we only have a 1 which is 1 upon 2 we have a negative 1 which is 1 upon 2 so so the power could also be calculated like this the magnitude of 1 upon 2 squared plus again the magnitude of 1 upon 2 squared 1 upon 4 plus 1 upon 4 gives you 1 upon 2 back this is it that's it for this video i think it's a little longer one i think i have missed the eye contact with you i think i've gone a little fast but these were some basic things you knew that from the beginning so i end this video over here i end this in the next video maybe we see some more examples till then take care of yourself and everyone around you do remember me in your prayers goodbye